Hey there, and welcome back to Grizzlies VR. Obviously, we're here for the pretty much the final part of this game. Custom Knight, max difficulty. Luckily, you just have to hold the enter button to make it go up. You don't, I don't have to keep doing this. So we have that covered. But yes, 420 mode. Now, uh, I don't even remember if I left this edited in or not in the other video. I don't know what makes the final cut or not sometimes. But in general, I think this is going to be pretty easy, like the original game, because these two well no, no you and you have sound cues so that's easy you might be a bit more tricky now that you're more active i have to be careful with the doors but that's fine because all i need to look at is the doors you are going to be the trickiest one because you do sneak attacks so i have to react really quick see look you already know i'm talking about you so yeah worst part is going to be prototype maybe roger it's hard to tell but i guess we'll find out uh, let me just make sure I don't do this wrong. wrong. Okay, let's just get into it. 420 mode. Please don't give me a phone call. I do not want a phone call right now. There was a bit of an echo last, last time. Gotta remember, if they show up here, close it before they try and do anything. Oh. You hear that? Oh. Alright, so now they're both there. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay. There you go. Damn, it's kind of tricky, though, because the way I'm set up here, I I can't look at both sides. But I guess if one door's closed, I don't have to look at it. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Left. Oh, wait. There's someone on the left, so... Oh, wait. That's silly. Someone's coming this way. Clown's still there. Open. This is all about prototype. Oh, no. Wrong one. Wrong one. Oh, no. I got it. Oh... Okay, left one. Okay. Grizzly's on the right. Alright. Hold on. Close that. Open this. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> if I beat this in one run, I'm gonna laugh. Because that's what happened with Grizzlies. Originally. Let's see how we're doing for power. System loading. Ooh, okay, not as good, but it's fine. Re Remember, if the rabbits take the lever, it's done because you can't close the door anymore. There it goes. Okay. Three o'clock, 60%, give or take. Not bad. But I'm, I'm being a lot more careful, obviously. Left, that's fine. It's battery four. All right, hold on. Close that. Open. That's on the right. And now this is open. See, it's fine. Who? No shot. Not again. Not like last time. It's okay. Oh wait, I can open this now. Oh, you know, clown. Close that just to be safe. I'm not even gonna turn on the TV because I don't want to risk any more power drain. Close that. Open. Open. No Roger Rabbit. Oddly enough. Left.
Wait. Oh, why is my hand there? Oh, Jesus. Oh. Left, open. Clown still on the right. Close. Open. Open. Oh, no shot. <laughs> okay. Close it. Half a minute left. It's on the left. No, no, Count's still there. Whew. Close. Ten sec. No, no, no. Why is my hand glitching out over here? Let's go first try. <laughs> oh, good lord. Oh. That's so weird. That's so unexpected. See, but no, but, but it's, it's the same reason I said, like, literally, because it's so easy, because you don't need the cameras at all. Prototype's the only one that's tricky because of the whole speed thing. I don't get what's happening with Roger, though. Roger doesn't... Uh, Roger never showed up. He only showed up once in the first video. And that was it. Ooh. For me. Indebted to you. Uh, I will watch that. Hold on. Let me just sit down a little bit. Ah, well, nothing... Wait a minute. There's two stars here. How do I get... Is it... I hate... I hate stuff like this. Is there a way to get... Well, let's play this first. Okay. Let's just play this first. Oh, where are we? Oh. Huh? Oh! Oh. You don't understand? You must pride and joy! I get that. Just like I don't pride and joy. No, not anymore, Grizzly. You've led me down a path of misery, and I cannot stand for it anymore. Oh, oh. Gotta run. Oh. What the hell is that? Oh. I To my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, silly Willy! Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Don't forget the rabbits. Oh, prototype. Did he just grab the camera? Out of all the priorities, Jonathan, you grabbed your camera. I guess you got to document it somehow. Oh, I still, I'm assuming the same AI is within these guys. That's why they're all so active. But power went out. Oh, shit. I forgot I had this. What? I didn't even see anything in there. Pl plier? What's that? Oh. Is that fl That's not a flashlight, is it? It is. Oh, no. We're in the dark now. Oh god, we start the breakers. Okay, okay. Be careful behind you. Ooh, EMP. I am not your friend anymore. It takes guts for you to say that to me, John. But I don't think he has the guts to face the flames that I'm about to hit your face. Oh boy. Creasley's clouds are for the people and... I think he used the MP. It's gonna... Huh. Okay. But I don't get the name of the tape though. Indebted to you. Huh. That might be everything then, I suppose. That part where, um, 
Jonathan uses the flamethrower. I think that's what you see, or it might be. It's it's like similar because I don't. I think the story in Grizzlies VR is display is kind of told differently, way differently compared to the first to the original game. So I'm not sure, you know, what is the same or not. But in terms of like Grizzly, like at the end of Grizzlies, I believe the custom night, or at one point, I know Grizzlies gets set on fire, and that seems to probably be how it happened. I definitely expect Jonathan to whip out a flamethrower and say, say hello to my little friend. That was unexpected. But I don't know, Joe, that was cool. A lot shorter than I was expecting, like this video, because, you know. I was planning on reacting to uh, the short film that Spectre made for Grizzlies VR, but I'm not sure, but it's funny because the video is literally titled Indebted to You, just like this tape, which is interesting. I think maybe that's suggesting that that's kind of like the next step. I don't know. I'm curious to see how that's going to go. All right. So right now I want to take a look at some of the things that are different in the Indebted to You short film by Spectre over on YouTube. I only saw like a little part of it, like, oh, it's different enough. Let me just wait and see if I want to react oh, to it. Oh. It's Grizzly the Bear. You <laughs> seem to have been in a pretty serious accident. Oh, that sounds horrible. Bear, don't be, my friend. It takes guts to live a life of adventure. Just it sure does. Down, collect your thoughts, dial into the story that's about to be told. Stay what? tuned to the Grizzly Grooving Station for the tall tales that'll wake you, my friend. For the tall tales that'll make you, my friend. To listen to your favorite station, 72.1 Grizzly. What the oh? What the hell? Hello, Angel. Oh! Now, now, I just wanted to point out, that sounds exactly like the caller from Night 2, but I thought that was someone different. I initially assumed it was Jonathan, and this kind of looks like Jonathan. But I don't know. I guess, let's just keep listening. After your little accident that you had, you seem to be in a pretty bad coma. Coma, huh? Now, before you wake up, I need to tell you a story about your friend, John. So, or, or, this isn't, no, this isn't Jonathan, no, no. This, I, this might be the coaxer. Okay. May seem like the righteous man you think he is, but there's something much deeper there. Really? I've been watching. You won't say. John? I've been watching him. Oh, you have. And I'll show you right now what happens when he tries to fall asleep at night. The bear watches him sleep. That's so. Why does he. S so. I get, so it's that's interesting. So the tapes are in a way. So the tapes are meant for Angel to watch, right? And the, I'm assuming the coaxer, this individual talking to us, is I guess trying to expose Jonathan in a way, or like he's trying to un he's trying to show Angel that there's much there's a lot more going on with Jonathan than we initially know. Now, of course, this is the night one tape. Which we've seen, okay. but there's also a part at the end where he starts talking. We start talking. <laughs> Let's see. You see, the bear has lost its mind. Okay. In the process of John creating the bear, it seems that it has found some sort of personality that has become obsessed with its creator. Yeah. How strange is that? I mean, I would have never thought that was possible. I really need you to understand something. This, this isn't normal. Well, obviously. A complicated, intricate mind of an animal, a beast. It cannot escape its natural state. It feels the need to protect those around them, even if it isn't perceived as so. But if it notices something is wrong, they will call you out. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the facial expressions are creepy as hell. And like the lighting just makes it even creepier. Maybe. Confused. Maybe. I am confused. Very. Where did John kill? The homeless man? Accident? Nope. Was it on purpose? Yep. Well, one day, 
A man tried breaking into the restaurant for shelter. The homeless man, yes. The man realized that John was home. Uh, he did. He became aggressive. And we furious. saw the homeless man. John was then trapped in a room to fend himself from the threat outside. Ah. Uh. He had company. Okay, so that's interesting. So I didn't understand the content, but like, like this homeless man is trying to break in. Nothing really changed there. Like, I get what he's saying, but I didn't. I was. I thought the man was trying to open the door to get inside Grizzlies. I didn't know he was going after John in this case specifically. But when John locked himself in here, he locked him. He didn't realize that Grizzly was with him at the time. And of course, he does it, and then my pride and joy. Yeah. The mind of the bear became corrupted. Well, the yeah. The technological advancements of the bear led to a tragic mistake for John. They could control it. The bear. They could, they could control their bodies. A terrifying thought. I felt like this should be known to the world. Because it's in depth to you. It's in depth, so not depth is in depth to the ones who can't understand the bigger pictures. The players at work. They're controlling you. Ooh. Manipulating you. Who's they? The president? The co government? Out. Wait, what do you say? You. Manipulating, controlling you? Selling you out. Are you out? Life is all theatrics and machines at play. John doesn't play by those rules. He sets himself free. But at what cost? Huh. That's interesting. I don't know. <laughs> this is a very interesting... Uh, like... I guess it's... It, like, seeing the flow of the... Con of, like, what he's saying is very interesting. So, he... So, obviously, Night 4 happens. And then we have the outro. I'm sorry, my friend. This is still the coaxer. I know you were abandoned and betrayed by your creator, but he's talking to Grizzly now. He's gone now. I know you're burnt. And yeah. But you know that I will fix you. Oh. You'll be strong. I will always have your back, my friend. This is in debt to you. This is in debt to you as well. In debt to you. Oh, Jesus. Welcome to the fate you deserve. Indebted. Oh, indebted to you. That's what he's saying. So, okay, so for so, so the coaxer, whoever the coaxer is, this guy is against Jonathan essentially he pretty much is gonna bring Grizzly back and I'm assuming this is gonna somehow lead to what Grizzlies 2 becomes interesting that's interesting indebted to you at least I think so now the indebted to you part makes sense I thought it was confusing that that last tape was named that but no indebted to you is what the coaxer says to you uh angel so, yeah, and the, co the coaxer, Xander Alsa. Nice job. That was really good. So here, so I'm curious about this, right? So the description, right? I should have looked at this first. I don't know why I didn't. Welcome to the Grizzlies VR experience, a short-length feature film that will indulge in the world of Angel, a man who has been in a serious accident that landed him in a deeply troubled coma. While his mind rests, he is brought into the world of torment and that of his friend, John. The cosmos and intergalactic forces of the universe want to tell him a story, and thus they came together. They have trapped him in a purgatory state where he must be forced to listen to the story of Grizzlies and why the things are the way they are. Why is John so paranoid? Why does he love this place so much? He must know the answers and he will find them soon. Only here on 72.1 Grizz FM. So, is this trying to say basically that the whole game is taking place in purgatory as he's in the middle of his coma? That's what it seems to be selling. Angel is a friend of of John, but then who's the coaxer of all people? If was if this was how the hell did he provide all this? 
it, the coaxer isn't just some normal human then by the sound of it i don't know they want to tell me about cosmos and intergalactic forces i have no clue but yeah that's going to be everything for the indebted to short film nice job yet again to specter that was really good and to the voice actors as well just credits here good job to everyone but yeah that has been grizzly's vr my thoughts i really enjoyed it this is really nicely well done by euro and lester Tellas. really nicely done really fun i like that i wasn't because i remember when i first heard about grizzly's vr i was like oh that's cool but i wasn't sure how it would actually go and I, i'm pleasantly surprised i like i like that it has it's not exactly the same right you do have like some uh, you know some mixture in there with regards to the mechanics like for example roger being able to take the door levers even though that didn't happen much for some reason it only happened in the first night i believe so but it is still a cool element of surprise to have in there but again I, I don't know i think in terms of roger pretty much having him at 20 means nothing obviously silly and grizzly um uh, I think, like, having their mechanics transport to VR, like, hearing the actual footsteps of them going to the doors is a really nice touch, especially with Silly being with the actual, like, clown nose, like, da -da, right? It's been ported to VR really nicely, and I like how Prototype is able to now sneak up on you, but the whole little, that, that little sneaking up bit is a nice touch, for sure, especially considering it can happen on both sides, because beforehand... In the original game, he would only appear from the right door. He only comes in through the right, so you only have to close that door. You didn't have to worry about the left door. But in obviously in VR, he can go from both ways, which is also a nice touch. I think in general, they did a really nice job, and I'm really happy with how the game turned out. A lot of fun. Love the whole, you know, cool to see like the VHS aspect from Spectre. Spectre did a really nice job as well, of course. It should, I mean, again, the credits. Everyone that pretty much worked on this, great job. The phone calls, I really enjoyed. Interesting how, in our case, right, the main character for this game obviously is different. We, in the original game, were Jonathan, but now we're Angel, right, which I think is interesting. We don't really know how Angel fits. We know Angel is a friend of Jonathan's, but aside from that, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's talk about, like, for example, the president was talking about us abandoning Jonathan. So I wonder if from a time, it's weird because like Jonathan calls you night one, night two, you're called by someone called the coaxer, which is a new individual. We never heard of him before, I believe. And then obviously night three, we got a call from what's his name? The president. Of course, with all that said, I hope you did enjoy it. I love the VR stuff, man. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff lets me know you're enjoying the content and want to see more of it. The game is in the description below as always. And with that said, I hope to see you in another video. Take care.